Welcome to Temple Builders Carpet. Temple Builders. We problem solve. Temple Builders safety first. Okay, Temple Builders, let's talk about HVAC today, okay? Or HVAC. Look at my whiteboard right here. Okay, the H stands for heating, the V, ventilation, and then air conditioning. Okay, normally in residential, uh, you're used to seeing two cabinets, okay? Look at my outside cabinet, okay? This is normally called a uh, condenser unit, condensing unit, okay? This, okay, traditionally, this would be an AC, right? You know, ACs run off electrical, and you have gas, okay, with a furnace right here, okay? So you have an AC, traditionally, you have an AC unit out here with a furnace, a gas furnace, okay? Uh, now you have uh, homes that's all electrical, okay? And it might be more effective to get a heat pump on the outside and an air handler, okay, for your inside cabinet, okay? Now, also, now that's two types of system. You, you also got a third system that uh, use a heat pump, okay, on the outside and also a gas furnace on the inside and it's called a hybrid system, a hybrid system, okay? Now, you can't tell the difference from a heat pump or air conditioner, okay? You can't tell the difference just by looking at it, okay? But the difference is that an air conditioner, okay, will, will cool your home, right? But a heat pump will cool your home and also heat your home, okay? Now, let's talk about let's talk about absolute zero for a minute because you got to get understanding of what's going on here because we're talking about heat transfer okay absolute zero is a is a theory that at negative 400 see right here negative 460 degrees fahrenheit or 273.15 degrees celsius or zero degrees kelvin that all motion stops and uh there is no heat at all okay that's negative 460 degrees fahrenheit right that's absolute zero okay so i'm saying that to say this which is basically if you go outside and it's zero degrees outside there is still heat outside okay it's just cold it's still heat in the air and we need to understand that and understand heat transfer okay because he always moves from hot to cold, okay? And that's what's going on with this heat pump. You're transferring heat that's in the building, right? And you're moving it out of the building or vice versa, getting the heat that's outside, right? And bringing it in the building. That's what a heat pump does, okay? Now, there's different types of heat pump. There, there is a... Uh, you see air to air heat pumps is water to water heat pumps which use uh geothermal technology right dealing with the earth's heat the heat that's in the ground okay and then you have uh water to air heat pumps and uh, air to water heat pump okay now heat pump seems to be the way of the future seems like to me and the technology is getting better however heat pumps used to um basically uh not be as effective around about 30 degrees 35 degrees fahrenheit okay because in those type of temperatures right when a heat pump needs to bring the heat from the outside inside and in those type types of temperatures of 30 degrees 35 degrees fahrenheit there's lesser heat in the air Okay, okay, so it's not as effective, okay? And that's why you have something like this, an air handler in here with uh, heat strips as a, as a, as a backup, as a, as a backup to your heat pump, okay? Now, let's talk about what happens with the HVAC system, okay? Now, you look at my drawing here, okay? Let's talk about the, 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 the refrigerant, okay? As the refrigerant, now let's, let's start with the thermostat because that's a major component of um the hvac system here's our thermostat okay so what we're finna do is we're finna uh uh cool off the home we're finna cool off the home 
Okay, so we finna go from the home being what 75, so we're gonna go to uh down to 70, okay, 69 degrees. Okay, so as we mash our button on the thermostat, okay, so our compressor starts up. Now our compressor is over here in our outside cabinet. Our compressor starts up, and I also I also our condenser fan starts up. Because remember on this outside cabinet, you've seen these before, it's a big fan on the top. So um, when this uh, compressor starts up, it starts pumping the refrigerant, okay? Pumping the refrigerant through our piping, okay? So let's say we move in here. As we come in here, our refrigerant is, a, is at a low temperature and a low pressure vapor, okay? As we move it through our piping, okay? We have a low temperature, low pressure vapor. And we and once we uh, get once our refrigerant get to um, our compressor, okay, our compressor does exactly that. It com it compresses the refrigerant, okay. Just like let me look at me. I'm mashing this tape measure, pressed. It compresses the re the, the, the uh, refrigerant, and then the pressure is proportional. The pressure is uh, proportional to the to the temperature, right? So when you compress the refrigerant, the temperature increases. Okay, that's what the compressor does, okay? So now you got a, a hot temperature, high pressure vapor, okay? Leaving the compressor, right? Going, going into the condensing coil, okay? Now condensing coil do just like, do just that, okay? It's, uh, you heard of condensation, right? So condensation changes uh, a vapor to a liquid. Okay, and so that's what the condensing coils are doing. It's taking that high temperature, high pressure um, vapor and changing it into a liquid. Okay, now as 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 this is as this is being exposed to the outside air or the surrounding air, the ambient air, and plus you have remember we have our condensing fan here. So it's pulling, the, our conditioning fan is pulling the air, or surrounding air over those hot coils, right? And remember, as we were talking about before, heat transfer. Heat always moves from hot to cold, okay? So our refrigerant is so hot, even though it may be 75 degrees on the outside, our refrigerant, has been compressed up into a temperature maybe 120, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So heat always moves from hot to cold. Now the fan is pulling my ambient air, okay, over the coils. And then now my heat is being released to the outside. And that's what basically HVAC or these air conditioning systems are doing, transferring heat. All right, so <clears throat> as, as my refrigerant now leaves my condensing coil, it's leaving my condensing coil at a medium temperature, medium pressure, pressure, and it's a liquid, and it's a liquid, okay? My heat is basically been delivered to the outside, okay? Now it's coming back over here to our, what's, uh, it's called a, um, metering device or expansion uh, valve and so the same principle with the compression as you compress compress this liquid okay it's proportional with the heat increasing or the temperature increasing the same thing goes around with the opposite end okay which is once you release this pressure okay the the, the, uh, the, the refrigerant is going to get cold okay it's going to get cold all right, and that's what's happening when the refrigerant comes here into our metering device or our expansion valve. It's releasing that pressure or it's depressurizing, okay? And once that happens, it gets cold. Now, depending on what type of refrigerant we have, we can have our R, look over here, R134A, okay? Now, this is dealing with the boiling point, okay? Just like water, just like water, 
boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, right? You boil in a pot of water on the stove and you see the steam or the vapor, right? Being released off of the water, right? Being vaporized, right? So that's the temperature at what uh, water boils at boiling point. But for these re refrigerants, look how low these temperatures are. Negative, negative 15.34 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that's for R134A, okay, which is, is a common refrigerant. Okay, R22, another common refrigerant. Boiling point is at negative 41.44 degrees Fahrenheit. These are very low temperatures, very low boiling points. Okay, so that's how we're transferring heat from place to place. Okay, because remember, that's, that's uh, one of the most important things to remember is heat moves from hot to cold, okay? Now, oh, Freon, Freon is actually a brand, okay? A brand of refrigerant, just like sheetrock is a brand of drywall, okay? Now let's go back, let's go back over here to our demonstration over here, okay? So, uh, once, once, the, um, once the refrigerant has now hit the uh, metering device, and it's become cold, okay? We got a blower down here on this air handler because with, with this right here, this model that I'm showing you up here, this is a, we got a heat pump on the outside and we got an air handler on the inside, okay? Now the difference that you can know if you got an air handler or a furnace, a furnace uh, usually gets supplied with gas, natural gas, okay? And so if you're using natural gas, you've got a combustion chamber, which means you're going to need a flue or a vent coming out of the roof. Okay, so that's two indications to let you know if you got an air handler or a furnace. The furnace needs gas, okay? And also you have, um, you have a uh, uh, vent, okay, going up, a large metal vent going up, okay? So let's get back to our model here, okay? So, all right, so the blower, the blower brings your room air. You see right here, I got a return register. Okay, so the return, and then with the return register, the room air is coming down through the return register, coming down my duct. My blower right here is bringing this air, room air, okay, up through my blower. It's gonna go through a filter, right? Cause you gotta get the um, air, bacteria, you gotta get the dust, you gotta get these stuff, uh, the particles and particulates, stuff like that out of the air, you know? Um, so as you go through the filter, right? Your your your, your refrigerant is in the, uh, the evaporator co coil. Your refrigerant is now in the evaporator coil and your room air blows over the the um the evaporator coil and what happens there is the heat remember uh heat moves from hot to cold okay so the coil is cold the heat from the air the room air moves into the refrigerant okay and the cold air comes out into look here, comes out into our ducts right here this way, this way, moving to moving into our living space. Okay, it's cold air moving to our living space. And look right here, it gets cold, then it starts to warm up a little bit, then it goes back into our return register. Okay, now this is called a forced convection loop. A forced convection. Okay. This out this this would be called our supply register. This is the supply register because it's supplying our room with our chilled air or our cold air, okay? Now, let's talk about this convection thing. Now, to help y'all better understand, we need to talk about heat transfer a little bit more, okay? Now, heat transfer happens with convection, conduction, okay, and also radiation, okay? Now, some examples of this would be, hey, look right here, this campfire, all right? Now, you get warmed from a campfire, most of the heat comes from radiation. 
Okay, light is a form of visible light is a form of radiation. All right, radiation is the electromagnetic waves. Okay, now exa another example would be the sun. See, the sun gives off radiation. However, space is a space is a vacuum, and this radiation is able to travel through space. So that lets me know right there that radiation doesn't need a medium, okay, to transfer heat. Now these other two, if you look at these other two, convection and conduction, they use a medium. A fire also have conduction because this fire is warming up the surrounding air. And then air, as it's heated, it becomes less dense and it rises. And then cool air is dense, so it sinks displacing um, the warmer air, causing a convection loop. That's what this is. Now look at this fella right here. He's not too smart, look. He's holding a copper rod in his campfire. So what's gonna happen? This is conduction, okay? So the heat is gonna travel down this metal rod, this copper rod, and it's gonna burn him. He's gonna drop that rod here soon, okay? Now, let's also talk about what else I need to talk about, the, the VOCs, yeah. That's another thing, because air conditioners, this would be, this air conditioner would be considered a central unit. You also have what's called a window unit. We all seen those before. And um, refrigerants can give out VOCs. One way that it's done is, okay, strap yards, okay, collect metal, we know, collect copper. So a lot of times these strap yards can't, they will not accept uh, air conditioner if they are have uh, refrigerant in them. So a lot of times these guys will go and uh, uh, break the um, lines, okay, and let the refrigerant out. That's illegal, okay. That's a uh, that's an ozone depleting substance, okay, ODS, okay. So you got something called the Clean Air Act, and the EPA prohibits individuals from venting uh, refrigerants, okay. And so that's one way that uh, VOCs will be given off from these, uh, from ACs, things like that. Okay, well, is there anything I, uh, I wanted to discuss the, um, okay, the, the, I think it's eight main parts of this system, which is you have a meter, metering device or the expansion uh, valve will be right here on the uh, air handler. Okay, you got the fan, which you know, condensing fan you got your blower, which will be down here. Okay, you have a filter here, okay. You'll have your thermostat here, all right. And then you have uh, your evaporator coil will be in here up at the top, okay. And I believe that's all that needs to be said. Y'all like the information, hit the like button, subscribe. Oh, no, I wanted to make mention too normally that the heat pump will cost more than the air conditioner, right? However, there's advantages and disadvantages to both, okay? So if you like this information, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, become my apprentice temple. Build.